guys. So we've been working on this 60 series rebuild. Started on it like a couple weeks ago. Anyways, we found some issues with the counter boards and the block being cracked. Kind of waiting on somebody to come cut them. So while I've been waiting, we've been doing some cleaning, some stuff we don't normally get to do when we overhaul them. I have some video of that and also some video of the cracks and what they do to crack them. All right, guys, we're going to start looking at these cracks here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. But as you can see right there, once I get into it, um, you can see that crack's pretty big. Usually, the ones we see aren't quite that large, and we can correct them at the shop. We have a tool to cut the counter bores and cut the cracks out of them. So what we would do would be cut the crack out of the counter bore with our tool. If it's not too large, we can cut it out and then we would shim it up to get the correct liner specs. Because what happens is when those cracks, even the smaller ones, um, it'll let your liner drop down some. And it's not much, just a few thousands. You know, the specs zero to three thousands. But when they drop down, you'll start having head gasket issues because you don't get a good clamp on your fire ring. These cracks here, they're a little bit too large. They're bigger than what we're going to be able to take out with, you know, a 60,000 shim, which is the max shim that you can go. So we'll call our, it's not a local dealer, but there's a dealer a couple hours away from us and they'll come down and they're going to cut out extra material. It's a lot, it's not a lot wider, but it's a little bit wider than what the counter bore is originally. And they'll put what they call a repair sleeve in there. We don't have the cutter to do that. We can only cut for the shims. So what they'll do is they'll come in and cut it out and then they'll drive them in and then that'll be good to go again. You don't have to worry about, the guy said it's basically like a factory engine. It's not quite that good, but it's still a lot better. <clears throat> So here I'm just explaining still about um, about the height of the liner. Like I said, the spec is zero to three thousandths. We like to run them at three thousandths at the top of the spec because there you get your most clamp on your fire ring. If you don't have a good clamp on your fire ring, then you'll be uh, getting combustion out of, out of the liner. When that happens, you'll burn up that fire ring. It'll actually, you know, it'll find a weak spot and it'll put a hole in it. And then that's when you start getting pressure in your cooling system. And since we have these cracks in the counter bore, we're having to wait till that guy can come down and cut them. We've had some extra time that we don't normally get on rebuilds. Normally it's a um, tear it down and get it back together pretty much as fast as you can. We still clean the parts and stuff. But normally we don't have time to paint them. You just get them clean, get them put back on, get the truck back on the road. But this time, since we've had, uh, I think about a week since we called to have that guy come down, we've been able to paint some stuff and get some stuff cleaned up, which is really nice. So at some point in its life, this truck had an out of frame done to it and someone has painted the oil pan and the valve cover. As you can see here, as I pan around, um, there's some paint flaking off of it and just the overall quality of the paint job isn't that great so we're sanding it down scuffing it up and trying to get it um get it prepped as best we can so the paint will stick better this time around there's a this is what they look like beforehand they weren't bad you can see some runs in the valve cover it's not that big an issue it's not a show truck but it'll definitely look better with a good paint job on it so here's a time lapse of me and Chase just sanding it down. I'll leave you to watch this for just a few minutes and then we'll get into painting it.
right here we have the prepped oil pan. It's all sanded down, blown off, and it's ready for paint. And this is the valve cover, all sanded down, blown off, and prepped. And you can see we have the decals and the stickers with the engine information all taped off. <clears throat> Here are some more parts that we cleaned up. That was a thermostat housing and then some charge air tubes and a water tube that we got cleaned up to paint. Here I am throwing a little paint on. This will just take a second and then um, we'll talk about what it looks like afterwards. So we got all our paintwork done and uh, it looks a lot better. The valve cover looks great. The oil pan's looking great. And then our parts that we painted are looking good too. Our coolant tube, timing cover. Um, I thought it was a good idea to paint some stuff um, in black just because it gives it a little bit of a, um, a contrast color. I don't like an engine that's painted all the same color. So the contrast will really look good on there. I also wanted to show this cam housing that we painted. We did this stuff off camera though. Hey guys, I forgot to end out that video where we did all the prep work and painting of the parts that we were putting back on that engine. Uh, as soon as that guy comes and finishes up cutting the counterbores for the repair sleeves, then we'll be going back together with it. So if you want to see the rest of the series of us rebuilding that 60 series Detroit, uh, stick around, um, comment, like, and subscribe. And then we'll see you in the next one.